Praise the Lord and welcome to the weekly message here at World Gospel Mission Church. The date is August 8th, 2021. Hope you all had a peaceful week. I'm glad you can join us again today to hear the Word of God. Let's all begin with the meditation of the week from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The main message comes from Isaiah chapter 34 verse 1 through 10. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, behold, it shall come down upon Edomia, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, it is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edomia, and the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the ear of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams there shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land therefore, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day, the smoke thereof shall go up for ever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste, none shall pass through it for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we are here to hear your word in the name of of Lord Jesus Christ. As we prepare to hear your word, may the Holy Ghost anoint each and every listener with the spirit of wisdom and spirit of understanding of your word of prophecy. Father God, may you provide the souls of those who receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and seek the knowledge of the truth today, receive the blessed assurance of the salvation of their souls and the abundant knowledge and understanding of your word of truth by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Through the prophet Isaiah, God gave an ultimatum to all the nations, the chosen people of Israel, and the churches of God currently living in the last days, which is the eve of the great tribulation that will befall onto the whole world, saying, Come near, all of you, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. Through the prophet Daniel, God set a time schedule for the t uh, people of Israel, 70 weeks e equaling 490 years. Daniel testified that there would be seven weeks and 62 weeks, 49 years, and then 434 years. From the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, and after three score and two weeks, that's 62, shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolation are determined. At the beginning of the last week, the seven years, the Antichrist the son of perdition and the man of sin shall appear and spread desolation in the middle of the week. Three and a half years. He prophesied that there would be a devastating great tribulation on the whole world. The period of the great tribulation that will come to pass is a time of long suffering that God will give to the people of Israel, the Gentile nations, and also the unregenerate church of God who do not believe in Jesus Christ. This is their one final chance to be saved. Nevertheless, it tells us that the wrath of God will come upon all unbelieving nations and their armies completely annihilating them, handing them over to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. All the hosts of heavens shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off the vine as a falling fig from the fig tree. God said that the great calamities that occur during the last great tribulation are days of revenge against all those who do not believe in the grace of salvation through the blood that Jesus shed to take away the sin of the world. This is the day of revenge for those who have rejected the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall be the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. For all members of the United Nations have conspired to eliminate the people of Israel from the face of the earth. The prophet Isaiah foresaw and testified in the Holy Ghost the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God coming down from heaven to judge all the nations of the world who did not believe in him. Isaiah 63, verse 1 through 4. Who is this that cometh from Edom? With dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments, like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is mine heart, and the ear of my redeemed is come. Apostle John foresaw in the Holy Ghost and witnessed the same vision as Isaiah. Revelation 19 verse 11, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Revelation 19 verse 12, His eyes were as a flame of fire, 
and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Revelation 19 verse 13 And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And then lastly, Revelation chapter 19 verse 15 And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. One thing I want to make sure we all understand is that the white horse rider in Revelation chapter 6 is not Jesus Christ. That is in fact the Antichrist mimicking Jesus. Subtle details we all need to pay attention is that the writer of chapter 6 only has one crown on his head and an empty bow, no mention of arrow. Jesus Christ on the other hand though, he comes down in chapter 19, as we read earlier, with a sharp sword that comes out of his mouth and many crowns on his head. The sword, this is the word of God. So whatever Jesus speaks out of his mouth, it shall be done. He doesn't need bombs and missiles like regular people of earth to fight against a war. All he has to say is die. Prophet Isaiah offered a prayer of supplication to God, just as Apostle John witnessed when he saw the Lord Jesus Christ coming down, rending the heavens on the day of judgment. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1 to 3. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence, as when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou camest down, the mountains flow down at thy presence. Prophet Isaiah testified of the great sight he had seen that no one could ever realize, see, or even think of. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 For since the beginning of the world men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Apostle Paul testified of what kind of person is to realize what God has prepared for those who wait for the Lord in the future. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12, But as, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen. God appeared in the form of a human in the name of Jesus and spoke personally about what would happen during the Great Tribulation. In Matthew 24, verse 29 through 30, he said this, Immediately after the Tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her sight, uh, light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 
Jesus spoke of the faithful servants who testify for his coming to judge the world, and also the evil servants who have no interest in his coming. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 51. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here an evil servant saying, The Lord Jesus isn't coming yet, he's going to come later, would be, a carnally minded Christian mocking and smiting the very few Bible believing Christians who dearly wait for his return because this world really has nothing to give them. It really isn't a, isn't a place for any Christians to look forward to. Only things we look forward to is the millennial kingdom of Jesus Christ, the perfect kingdom, because this kingdom currently is ruled by Satan. And if you love this world, you're loving what Satan has for you. Because currently he is the prince of this world, the king of this world. Apostle John foretold and testified in the Holy Ghost of the greatest calamities that will occur during the Great Tribulation. Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 through 17 and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every one mountain, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand. Not a single tough guy or gal can withstand this day of wrath. Majority of the problems that I've noticed with Christians these days, carnal Christians if you will, are they skip out on the two very important um, commands given by Jesus himself. Two things, among many, two basic things that we need to do as a Christian is to study the word according to 2 Timothy 2.15 and we're also told to search the scriptures as written in John 5.39 to study the word and search the word. You need to search through the word every book, every page, every chapter, every verse and compare and connect the dots within the Bible. I can guarantee you, if you do not use King James Bible, 2 Timothy 2.15 will not tell you to study the Bible. That is a very important aspect that we need to do as a follower of Jesus Christ. If you truly love Jesus, everyone is appointed to study and search the scripture. Otherwise, how are you going to know what is written in the word of God? How are you going to know what he wants and what he doesn't want? Through the prophet Isaiah and Jeremiah, 
the trumpet was blown to warn the people of Israel that they would be destroyed by Babylon because of their transgression. But the watchmen of Israel did not blow the warning trumpet as they were busy eating and drinking. Prophet Isaiah testified of them in Isaiah 56, verse 9 through 12. All ye beasts of the uh, field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain, from his quarter. Come me, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Apostle Peter testified of the false prophets and false teachers who shall be in today's church age. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. And then, same chapter, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her swallowing in the mire. The final chapter and the second to last verse of the Bible ends in this way. The God's word says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Nevertheless, the servants of God who do not blow the trumpet to warn of the day of judgment with the return of the Lord Jesus Christ are false servants, false teachers, and false shepherds, like the same shepherds of Israel blinded and dumb as dogs, and like the evil servants of which Jesus spoke of, they will receive the retribution of hypocrites and will grind their teeth in hell. Amen. Come. Lord Jesus. Jesus will return soon. He will come for his church first, the saved bride of Christ, before he allows the great tribulation to begin on the earth. He will then return on his second coming with the church to destroy the unbelieving world. Many Christians who have not studied the word of God by rightly dividing them dispensationally, wait to welcome Jesus while they are still here on earth, as the Lord rides down from the heaven. You need to be riding down behind Jesus from heaven on the second advent. If you have not been saved, or been living as a carnal Christian, believing another gospel, another Jesus, who wants Jesus to come at a later time because you have a life to live you have a life to enjoy and you have places to go to things to buy unfortunately you're going to be left behind to face the great tribulation jesus said he is the way the life and the truth the way for a saved christian to escape this wrath Admit that you're a sinner, repent and believe in this gospel, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today.
day of salvation is now. The day of salvation is today. God bless.